You have 20 minutes for your presentation and then we'll go on to the questions. Hola, buenas tardes. Good afternoon. I'm Jesus Arturo Perez. I am from Monterrey. I come from the field of university, and I'm going to present two papers that we have been working on over the past two years. The first paper has to do with detection and mitigation of distributed denial of service attacks, which is one of the major problems that we have nowadays with operators in the internet. And after the ransomware, as you can see on the screen, this is the most used type of attack. We have focused our research in low rate attacks, which are far more difficult to detect compared to the high rate attacks. Now, something that is also new that we want to research is that we're going to focus on devices of the Internet of Things, IoT. So we're going to use a data set to train models that then send out attacks from IoT devices to IoT devices. And this has been something that has been partially forgotten. Very often we forget that the IoT devices are part of the network and that from these devices normally many attacks are then launched. We have often seen attacks such as Mirai and other types of attacks that have been massive attacks from IoT devices. As I was saying, a wide study has been made of the high rate attacks. So a large number of the tools that we have to prevent attacks such as these identify the high rate events because they are easier to detect. We have tried to focus our research on the slow rate attacks. And something else is that most of the papers in this research study are done in the control plane. So we want to do this in the data plane using P4. So this is one of the parts that is also new in the sense of this focus of our paper. With that aim, we used a recent data set. So this data set was done by the Cybersecurity Institute from Canada. It is available. Basically, this is created by 105 IoT devices. 33 different attacks are launched, and we selected one, maybe one that is most common from all the slow attacks, which is slow loris. Now, this data set consists of 47 features. From these, many are features that are estimated. For example, when we estimate the average time or things such as that. Now, when we want to do this in the data plane with P4, P4 as a programming language has a large number of limitations. One of these is that you cannot carry out divisions. That is why we were unable to use directly if we wanted to identify this in the P4 level, we couldn't use the original data set because of these limitations that P4 has. So for this reason, we created a reduced data set version from, compared to the original version containing only the 12 features that could be extracted from the headers using a P4 program for any flow that would go in the direction of the switch. So it is in that sense that we created a reduced version. And from the 47 features of the original data set, 
we then extracted 12. These can be captured and processed directly through P4 in a switch in the data plane or in a software-defined network. This then led us to create our own data set in order to train the models. The AI models that we trained, namely the AI models we trained for this experiment. The data set ultimately was divided into three sections. One was used for training purposes, which are the largest one, 122,000 records. Then one was that for fine tuning or validation, where we had 11,000 records. And finally, to test accuracy and traffic never seen in that data set, we kept about 41,000 records. And before referring to the models, I'm going to explain the proposed architecture. As we mentioned, when we spoke about software-defined networks that are used a lot in data centers, what we normally have is a separation of the control plane and the data plane. So the large number of papers have researched the mitigation of these attacks for many years and had initially done this in the control plane. The control plane has to analyze all the flows, extract the features, and send it to an IDS to validate this as an attack traffic or benign traffic. Now, very often this wasn't couldn't be scaled up in larger networks because the control plane would be overwhelmed by the number of records received and then validating this through the IDS and if this was an attack to send orders to stop the attack. So that is the advantage of testing a solution in the data plane, which is what we're seeking. In that sense, in the switch in the P4 switch, we process the flows, we extract the features, and then we send it to an external IDS. The IDS notifies the controller in the control plane whether the received flow is an attack or if it's benign. If it is an attack, then the controller will send an order to the switch in the data plane in order to mitigate that attack or the IP of that attacker. So this then allows us to create a strategy to identify this in the data plane that could be better scaled up. The models we trained with this purpose and to select which was the best one are all these that you have here. Some are for machine learning, so others are deep learning. We tested different models in order to see which one worked best. The best ones were random forest, which is machine learning, and CNN, which is for deep learning. These A models were used in order to carry out simulations. As you can see, the accuracies obtained in the testing phase were very high. Most of these above 98% and also using the metrics of recall and F1 score, here we obtained quite acceptable results. So once we selected the models that had the best metrics or assessment after the training stage, these were then deployed in an experimental setup. With this aim, we used Mininet with P4 switches and BMV2, BMV2 P4 switches and the P4 utils for the routing tables in the SDA switches. Additionally, for the benign traffic, we used TCP replay using the same traffic of the PCAPs. And for the attack traffic, this was generated using an open snow source slow loris tool. The topology we created was a topology that was a bit more sophisticated compared to previous studies. This included several switches, two P4 switches towards the corporate network, which we simulated in the top part, and at the bottom, we had several 
devices from any network that potentially could carry out attacks and could send an attack towards the devices in the top part, H10 and H11, which would be representing a corporate network. So for these experiments, we injected traffic from the PCAP files util utilizing TC pre-play. And at the same time, the IDS contained the two models that had the best outcomes, the machine learning and the deep learning models that we had selected with our random forest and CNN. And finally, during the mitigation phase, once the models identified an attack, after three flows coincided as have been identified as attackers, we then proceeded to apply the mitigation strategy. And for this, we used P4 utils and to modify the match action tables in the P4 switches to drop the packets from malicious byte B addresses. So we identified three flows as attacks. One same attack is detected three times, and the third time the order of mitigation is sent out so that afterwards that IP is blocked. We do this up to three times in order to prevent a potential false negative case or to prevent blocking traffic that potentially could be benign traffic after a false identification by the IDS or the trained model. So once three flows have been attacked, identified as attacks, we proceed to mitigation. And as you can see in this slide, the attacker that previously was carrying out five connections goes from five to zero. This means that the attacker has been completely blocked. The detection time and the learning times of the model for the three flows took us 20 seconds. Mitigation only takes 0 0.3 seconds, so once the IDS determines that this is an attack, the control plane receives the signal, and in less than 0 0.3 seconds, it is completely blocked. So this study is the follow-up of another study that attacks, that studied DDoS attacks. And we finally managed to do this in the data plane. The next objective is to try and program a decision tree for random forest in the data plane in order not to depend on an external IDS as was done in this simulation. So as far as we are aware, this has not been previously implemented. So we're going to implement an AI model in the same switch using V4. This study was submitted to the Q1 Elsevier Computer Networks. This is being reviewed by this journal and hopefully will receive approval of this. The second work that I want to present is a BGP anomaly detection by statistical analysis. The first one is funded by Frida and it's been research entirely supported by Frida. And the project that I am going to present today is supported by LACNIC. LACNIC is provided, fun, provided funding and Carlos has also supported providing his opinions and advice on how to better approach this project. Carlos Martinez, who's part of LACNIC, and we work with two students and one researcher from the Institute of Monterrey. We want to detect BGP anomalies, as we all know, is the border gateway protocol that regulates traffic or traffic exchange between uh, autonomous systems on the internet. We are going to use the RIPE Network Coordination Center data. Basically, we are based on uh, our SEC4, which is deployed in Geneva, Switzerland. And from that router, we retrieve all the BGP information for uh, our analysis. 
for the project, we wanted to detect anomalies not only related to attacks, but also anomalies of a different nature. Among the ones that we considered, there were three attacks, Code Red, Slammer, and Nimda. All of these were worms that saturated the internet a few decades ago. And then we looked at uh, BGP uh, uh, anomalies for other events, for example, misconfiguration, uh, TMET, and the Moscow blackout. That well, was very well known. It was a blackout that uh, caused many BGP routes to cause a lot of anomalies to many routers that were associated. What was the strategy that we followed? We looked at the BGP updates, and in particular, we chose three features that we considered were quite relevant, or relevant enough to detect an anomaly. So we have the announcements, withdrawals, registries, and we also looked at study periods of at least three minutes to implement the uh, medium absolute uh, deviation approach or strategy. It basically consists of detecting anomalies or overlapping of announcements and withdrawals, unusual, for a specific time frame and that they remain fixed for that time frame. More specifically, we were looking at the medium of the absolute deviation for each element of the data set uh, compared to the median for the entire data set and then multiplied by a factor. We chose the factor of three because three is what we would usually consider three standard deviations, including 99% of the population. And thus, we were able to include any outlier or atypical data within that threshold. If we re kept it consistent for at least a six minute time frame, we would be able to detect an anomaly in the BGP traffic. And that's the strategy that we followed for our study. We looked at these five events, three worms, three attacks, BGP uh, anomalies due to misconfiguration like TMNet, and a blackout, the Moscow blackout. We have the exact dates and occurrences for all of these events that we also downloaded from the internet and other uh, studies that we use for reference and our results were quite satisfactory as you can see on screen. The section in green is the occurrence of that event. In blue, we can see the announcements. In red, the withdrawals. And finally, in pink, I think it's maybe pink or brownish to you, is the overlapping between those two. If you look at the, uh, the graph, the technique that we used allowed us to identify the anomalies within the occurrence. That was the behavior of the misconfiguration in Malaysia, at Telecom Malaysia. And as you can see, it matches the occurrence of the event. In the case of Slammer, we detected the peak of the attack. What you can see to your left, we can see that the increase in announcements and withdrawals, the BGP announcement and withdrawal significantly increased. And as it starts coming down within what we consider to be the occurrence, our technique does not detect it anymore. Unlike the median, the difference was not as significant and it could be considered an outlier value, but still within the BGP parameters. The same with NIMDA. We were able to detect a significant part of that attack with our technique, and it was even 
better for the Moscow blackout. We can see that our technique fully matched the occurrence. Same with gold red. In just one of the attacks, the accuracy was um, significantly lower, but as you can see, the technique made it possible to detect the anomaly within the full traffic within the occurrence. The objective or what we wanted to get out of this technique is that it can be used in combination with AI models and that is actually the next step that we will take to build on this project where we can implement the math technique and combining it with the accuracy to gen that could be generated by an AI model and therefore attempt to increase the accuracy or certainty to predict or not and any anomaly in the BGP traffic. The chart shows the findings or the results for each of the events as you can see for the misconfiguration we had a 96 percent accuracy same with the code red warm and the Moscow blackout lower accuracy were the slammer and the nimda worms and we also tested it with one cry reaching similar results to NIMDA and SLAMMER. But in the case of Wanna Cry, there was something particular that unlike the attacks that had been deployed in the past that generated a lot of traffic, Code Red, for example, would launch a service denial attack against the White House. So it did generate a lot of traffic. Now, Wanna Cry was a ransomware after propagating as a worm. It would encrypt the machine that was being attacked and it would disable it from generating generating more traffic. As I mentioned before, this is a strategy that we want to combine with an AI technique to use in tandem with uh, AI to increase the accuracy of uh, AI models that are becoming more popular to predict attacks or anomalies within the network. The MAD technique being uh, as a standalone technique can be used to detect day zero attacks, zero day attacks that AI models will not be able to predict. We can also use to enhance the anomaly detection together with AI, as I said before, or to detect or to tag traffic that then can be used to train AI models and therefore increase their accuracy. Well, that would be all on my end. Thank you very much. And finally, this past last paper, median absolute deviation for BGP anomaly detection has already been published on the Future Internet Journal. You can have it available on that link if you want to look at the entire project. It's already been published. It's not being peer reviewed. It's an open access journal. So you can uh, look at it uh, freely. Great, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Thank you, Arturo. Are there any questions? I do have a question about BGP, and I'm curious how do updates and, and withdrawals work whenever there is a warm attack? Could you repeat your question, please? In the case of code red, for example, how did that warm cost of variations to the BGP updates or withdrawals? I didn't quite get how that could happen. I did get the configuration errors, but I wasn't, I'm not sure how that BGP movement could result from a warm. It is an analysis that is hard to carry out. What we basically did was to extract data from different routers that were available. Now, the traffic increase was generated 
by the but the attack and and the traffic that they were generated and therefore a part of that network in a way was disabled because it was saturated and some routes or some part of the network that were disabled due to the attack would cause BGP to consider them dead and other routes would be updated and they started exchanging the withdrawals and the announcements and notifications therefore impacting the regular op BGP operations. In the graphs that I just showed, you can see an increase in the number of announcements and withdrawals while the attack is happening. So the explanation that I can find is basically that due to the magnitude of the saturation, that would mean or, or, or that would cause a part of that network to shut down, therefore impacting the BGP behavior as some routes were shut down or were down. Okay, it's clear. Thank you. So if there are no further questions, thank you very much, Arturo.